Hello everyone, my name is Adriano Arrigo and I'm a PhD candidate in the PSMR group at University of Mons. I am realizing a PhD thesis where my promoter is François Vallée from University of Mons and my co-promoters are uh, Jalal Kazempoul from Technical University of Denmark and Jean-François Toubault from University of Mons. Today I will present a few slides on uh, optimization under uncertainty and especially uh, distributionally robust optimization. But first of all, thanks to you all for participating in the poll we published on the LinkedIn webpage of PSMR Group. Do not hesitate to connect with us. And uh, yeah, we got numerous answers and uh, we will have a look at the results now. So um, about the contents, First, uh, we'll have a quick overview of our example, and uh, I will try to show how very complex mathematical ideas may look uh, very natural when, when applied to a simple problem. Uh, then I will introduce the optimal power flow problem, which is um, a power system application, which is usually affected by uncertainties. And then we'll uh, discuss what the arrow is and uh, what it can bring to our problems. So let's have a look to our uh, simple problem, which is also a, an optimization problem under uncertainty. And uh, usually this kind of problem has four ingredients. Um, they have an objective function which is uh, here to maximize our sleeping time or to minimize the time we spent on the roads. The constraints is uh, to arrive on time and our unique decision variable is uh, to decide the time we should leave our home. And this problem is affected by uncertainty, which is um, the time that uh, we will have to spend on the road. So the question is, how to deal with this uncertainty. And um, so let's assume that uh, it's the first day that we have to go at work. And uh, yeah, the, the very natural uh, behavior is to consider to check the time on Google Maps. And here, we, let's assume that it will take 40 minutes. And you have to, to, to decide uh, which time you will leave your home. And um, from the results of the poll, um, most so some of you uh, decided to to go at 7:20. At 7:20, but others decided to go uh, even uh, before uh, because they thought that maybe uh, Google Map was not a, a good forecast. So what 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 did happen here? Um, we took a decision based on the unique value of uncertainty, a single value forecast. And this is usually called deterministic uh, point of view. So can we do better? Yes, yes, we can do better by including a probabilistic information into the problem. Instead of given one value, uh, let's have uh, different scenarios, for example. And that's exactly what we did after. So uh, we recorded the scenarios after one week, but we will come back uh, at this problem later. And after two weeks, we, have, we had uh, even more scenarios. And uh, here we have 10 scenarios. Um, just uh, an additional information that you, you didn't have in the, in the, in the poll. Uh, the mean of this scenario was uh, thir about 37 minutes. And uh, you, you, you can see that it is less than uh, what, what Google Map uh, just forecast. But so, so that allowed you to, to somehow take more risk or to, to take advantage, advantage of this information. And some of you uh, decided to go later than uh, 7.20 uh, to, to be able to sleep more, for example. And uh, most of you, instead of having a spike at 7 a.m., uh, decided to shift uh, the decisions to this spike, which is uh, 7.20. So we can see that uh, on average, you decided to go later based on this uh, new uh, information. And I think you, you were right because um, you, you tried uh, to, to optimize your decisions for, based on more information. 
And uh, what you did uh, is called in, ma in mathematical programming, stochastic programming or scenario-based programming. You, 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 you tried to optimize your decision uh, such that it minimizes, for example, the expectation of your uh, objective over all the scenarios. So you, you, you tried to use all the information um, you had. So with scenario-based programming, uh, usually we minimize the expectation of our objective function. But some of you uh, maybe uh, tried to um, be more risk averse and um, they, they took their decisions such that um, it allowed you to be on time, for example, 95% of the time. Um, if you want to be sure to arrive on time 95% of the time, uh, you, you will try to impose this kind of mathematical constraints, um, such that the probability of you of arriving on time is greater or equal to uh, 95%. And um, here, perhaps, some of you will say, okay, 95% is, is, is safe. Some of you will decide, no, I want to, to, to arrive on time 99% of the time. And uh, here comes a very important uh, concept, which is called the risk attitude of the decision maker. And um, based on the risk appraisal of the, of the decision maker, the decision can be different. So, for example, if, if you like to take risk, you will try to get up later. Uh, but but it, if you are a safe person, you, you, you will try to, to, to get up uh, really, really soon. So then we have another kind of, uh, of uh, situation where uh, we have an important meeting. We have even more information about our uncertainty with uh, 15 scenarios. But we know that uh, it's before an important meeting and we, uh, we, we, we want to be 100% 100, 100 safe and sure to arrive on time. And yeah, here, most of you decided to go um, to, 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 to depart sooner and uh, the, the, the spike and the, your, your answers just shifted to the left uh, with a mean which is equal to uh, 7 uh, a.m. and 6 minutes. So, yeah, here the goal uh, is to be 100% safe and uh, this is usually called in, uh, in the stochastic optimization framework, robust optimization. So you assume that you have probab probabilistic information or uh, interval information, and uh, you, you, you try to optimize your decision for the worst case scenario ever seen. And uh, here our, in our example, it's 46 minutes. And uh, so perhaps you will decide to leave your home at 7, uh, 14 or maybe uh, before that. So now, yes, let's come back to, to this case with um, one week um, uh, observations. Here, the, so, um, the, the, the problem is that with only one week information, we have very few information and perhaps this information is biased. And we, we cannot 100% rely on it. Uh, so it may be erroneous or biased. And um, yeah, in practice, uh, even if we try to, to forecast this, uh, this um, data with, uh, with, with the best forecaster, uh, it, the, 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 the results will never be perfect. So um, what shall we do? We can use here distributionally robust optimization and it's especially designed when, uh, when the, um, the, the, the input data is, uh, is misrepresented or biased. So if we have a quick uh, recap of the uncertainty modeling techniques that we, we have just discussed, um, if we have a single value forecast, it's called deterministic. But uh, we have seen that we can perhaps do better by using scenarios, by using either stochastic programming or chance constraint, chance constraint programming. The difference is that with scenario-based or stochastic programming, you just uh, assume that you will minimize your expected value over all the scenarios. 
With chance constrained programming, we will try to impose a probability of arriving on time. Then, before an important meeting, for example, you will use robust optimization, optimization su such that your decisions will be robust uh, over any kind of real realization, potential realizations. So, uh, how you, you, you will model the uncertainty in this case, uh, it's that you, you will use the worst case uh, scenario among the, 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 the available information. And we've seen that when we have few available information, we will be able to use distributionally robust optimizations, but we'll have um, a, a few, um, you will discuss that later on. And what is also important to say is that even with the same technique and input data, the decision maker may take different optimal decisions. And this is the concept of risk attitude. And we've seen that um, throughout your, your decisions, um, Many of you have different uh, approaches for, for, for solving these small problems and, um, and it's linked to your own risk attitude. So let's introduce now the optimal power flow problem, which is also a power system application with uh, uncertainties. This problem has also the four ingredients we discussed uh, before. The objective is to minimize the cost of generating electricity with some constraints on balancing equation and transmission capacity constraints. The decision variables of this, this problem is to set the gener generating level of the generators um, such that it minimizes the cost of generating the electricity. This problem is also affected by uncertainty with uh, increasing renewable generation, which is known to be inter intermittent. This is the mathematical formulation of an optimal power flow problem, where we have um, the head cost of scheduling energy, P, and reserves, R. We have also real-time cost of activating the reserves, uh, and here we use linear decision rules to model the second stage. We have the add operational constraint on minimum and maximum uh, capacity of generators, for example. We have the add and real-time balancing constraints and real-time operating constraints. The problem is affected by uncertainty and the uncertainty here stems from the renewable-based generation. So what shall we do? And uh, let's have a quick look to the, the techniques we already saw. So stochastic programming, robust optimization, and chance constraint programming. All these uh, techniques assume um, that we have enough information available, and uh, it assumes that the forecast is perfect. Or the problem is that uh, in our case, uh, the perfect forecast is never accessible. So, um, to edge against any misrepresentation of uncertainty, we will use DRO. Uh, DRO stands for Distributionally Robust Optimization, and uh, it aims to make distributionally robust optimal decisions. This decision should be robust if the true distribution is different from the known data, or uh, if we have a biased input distribution. How can we uh, make distributionally robust uh, decisions? Um, we will do that by taking into account multiple distribution functions. Um, um, for example, if uh, the, the data we have um, at our disposition is uh, described by several distributions, we'll enclose them and put and give them as, as an input to our DRO problem. Um, we will give, give it as an input inside an ambiguity set, which is defined as a family of potential distribution to describe the uncertainty. So there exist different types of ambiguity set. The, the first one is the moment-based ambiguity set, and this set encloses the distribution P which shares the same moment, so for example, the mean and the covariance matrix. 
Another type of ambiguity set is called metric-based ambiguity set. And uh, they are based on a distance function that computes the distance between two distributions. Um, here, the metric-based ambiguity set collects the distribution which are closed in the sense of this distance uh, to an empirical distribution that we will call P at N. And this empirical distribution is based on historical observation, for example. The distance between two distributions is usually uh, the Wasserstein distance. And um, the Wasserstein distance is, um, in fact, um, the solution of a, um, um, an optimal transportation plan between the probability mass of the empirical distribution and a candidate distribution. By using this Wasserstein distance, we can uh, think of a ball around the empirical distribution which includes all potential distributions um, uh, to, 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 do to describe the uncertainty. So now we can write our optimal power flow problem in a distributionally robust manner. And uh, in the objective function, we will um, minimize the worst case expectation over all distribution inside uh, the ambiguity set P of our real-time real um, activation cost. You can see there that we will select the distribution P inside our ambiguity set uh, P, which um, correspond to the one that will mostly affect our uh, cost. With the same ID, we can uh, introduce distributionally robust chance constraint, uh, which will select the worst case distribution, uh, which means the one that will mostly affect the probability of uh, our constraint to be verified. We have solved the distributionally robust optimal power flow problem with the 24 node IEEE reliability test system. We have seen that the distributionally robust optimization may perform better than classical approaches like sample average approximation, which is an approximation of scenario-based programming. Here, to, uh, to show that, we have uh, performed an out-of-sample analysis, which consists in collecting the optimal uh, decisions and then run a, um, a real-time optimization based on unseen scenarios of uncertainty. Based on those results, we can compute a total expected cost and its standard deviation, which is here represented by the shadow area. We observe that the distributionally robust optimization may perform better within a, a certain range, and then the expected cost is even higher than the, the scenario-based programming. Here we can see the value of rho as um, a risk tuning parameter, where when you select rho um, as a big value, you will have um, a behavior which is conservative, close to robust optimization. And when you select lower values for rho, you will have um, a behavior which may perform better than sample average approximation, where we observe a lower expected cost with lower standard deviation in the cost. So to conclude, um, the RO allows to edge and against uh, any misrepresentation of probabilistic forecast, and uh, this technique may perform better than classical stochastic optimization approaches under a few available information. So th thanks for watching and do not, do not hesitate uh, to connect with us and to contact us if you have uh, further questions.